All right, so today we're doing these four math questions from India. Enjoy. Okay, so the first question we have is 10 divided by half minus 2. So how can we represent that? So first we have 10 and then divided by, this is where the tricky part comes in. Because when it says half, you're going to have to write this as, instead of 2, as 1 over 2. Because 1 over 2 is same as half, and then minus 2. Now in order to solve this, we have to remember PEMDAS, which is P-E-M-D-A-S where P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, and S is subtraction. We're going to go in this order. So in this case, what do we see first? We're going to see division and subtraction. In this case, D comes before S. So in that case, we're going to have to do division first. So what's 10 divided by 1 half? Well, the idea is that we can't really divide it because 10 is not a fraction. So 10, we could represent as 10 over 1. And remember, when you're dividing fractions, we have to remember KCF, which is keep change and flip so in this case we keep 10 over 1 change from division to multiplication and lastly flip from 1 over 2 to become 2 over 1 10 times 2 gives us 20 1 times 1 gives us 1 20 divided by 1 is just 20 and lastly we just end up with 20 minus 2 which is pretty easy to solve because that's just an answer of 18. 90 percent of people get this question wrong so we have 81 to the 0 0.25 so how do we simplify this the question is, how do we simplify this part? Because normally you're going to see exponents to a whole number or a fraction, not really a decimal. So we're going to try to convert 0 0.25 into a fraction. How do we do that? We take the numbers after the decimal place, which in this case is 2, 5. And then what do you do from there? Num the total number of numbers you have, you write that many zeros and put a 1 in front. So 0 0.25 is the same as 25 over 100. Now let's try to simplify this to make our lives a little bit easier. I see that 25 and 100 both end in a 5 and a 0, which means that they're going to be divisible by 5. Do that 25 divided by 5 is 5, 100 divided by 5 is 20. Now, what can I do from there? 5 and 20 are also divisible by 5 again. Do that, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So then 0 0.25 is the same as 1 fourth, like a quarter, you know, is 0 0.25 cents. So we could write this as 81 to the 1 4th power. Now, what does this actually mean? When you have a fractional exponent, let's just say you have x to the a over b, this is the same as x to the a power root b. So in this case, we take our x, which in this case is our base of 81 to the first power, root our b value, which is our denominator, so that's the fourth power. And then we can simplify it, because 81 to the first is the same as what? 81, any number to the first is always the same as itself, so this is just the fourth root of 81. Then how do we figure this out? Basically figure out what number multiplied itself the four different times is equal to 81. One times one times one times one is just equal to one. Two times two times two times two is just equal to 16. Three times three times three times three is equal to 81. Nine times nine is 81. Therefore, this is right here is just equal to the fourth root of three times the fourth root of three times the fourth root of three times the fourth root of three, which finally gives you an answer of three for this question. Let's try out this geometry question. So in order to solve this, I'm gonna label each section. So we have one, I'm gonna call this angle A, call the angle we're gonna try angle B, and this last angle, angle C. Using that, I could actually create a systems of equations. Because why? I see that angle A plus angle B has to sum up to 130, because these two add up to this angle. And then using this, which sums up to 80, is comprised of angle B and angle C. So B plus C is equal to 8. Now, what can I do from there? Basically, I'm just going to try to solve this by adding the two equations. Because when I do that, I get A plus 2B plus C is equal to 130 plus 80, which is going to eventually leave me with 210. And then what can I do from there? Now I know that A plus B plus C, which is a straight line, sum up to 180 degrees. So then I get A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. And what can I do from there? I could literally just subtract because when I do that, A minus A cancels out, C minus C cancels out, 2B minus B is the same as just 2 minus 1, which is 1B. So B is equal to 210 minus 180, which is an answer of 30. And for the last question today, we have 4 factorial minus 3 factorial over the square root of 9, and that's equal to what? So how do we normally figure out what factorials are basically the idea of factorial is that you take this number four and multiply by all the integers smaller than it so in this case it's four 
times 3, times 2, and then times 1. This is pretty easy to solve. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 24 times 1 gives us an answer of 24. So it's going to kind of be the same idea for 3 factorial. So we take our number 3, and then we can multiply it by all the numbers smaller than it. So in this case, it's 3 times 2 times 1. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 1 gives us just 6. So then we also have the square root of 9. How do we evaluate the square root of anything? Basically, you figure out what two numbers multiplied by itself give you 9. So in this case, 9, you know, is 3 times 3. So this is just equal to the square root of 3 to the second power. The idea is that when you have the square root of x to the second power, square root and square cancel out, giving you x. So in this case, square root and square cancel out, giving you 3. So when we simplify everything, we have 4 factorial, which in this case, we figured out is 24 minus 3 factorial, which we figured out is 6, and this is all divided by the square root of 9, which is 3. 24 minus 6 gives us 18. 18 divided by 3 gives us a final answer of 6 for this question. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.